Welcome everyone, you are watching the first video made for the online microwave engineering lab. Purpose of this video demonstration is to provide a systematic introduction to the basic microwave measurement. You may confront with many of the devices, components, procedures and concepts applied to the, to the lab for the very first time. This video introduces you with the equipment that are required for the preparation of experimental setups for uh, electromagnetic course ERE 531. You will not find such kind of apparatus in any other electrical engineering lab. You are advised to have an instruction manual like this one as displayed on the screen. A concise electronic copy of this manual will be posted on D2L. This instruction manual explains 16 different experiments. Out of them, 9 important experiments including the power measurement, attenuation measurement, impedance measurement, reflection measurements are covered under the electromagnetic course. Your course includes exercise 1, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Let us consider any electrical circuit where we need a signal generator such as a voltage source or a current source to power up the circuit, some connecting wires to transmit energy some load, load components like resistor, inductor or capacitor and some instruments like port meter, ammeter, watt meter, oscilloscope and so on. Likewise, the microwave circuit need a signal generator, waveguides, load and meters. The fundamental frequency of a microwave signal is between 300 MHz and 300 GHz. At Ryerson University, the microwave lab is designed with setup developed by LabBolt. The center component of the LabBolt workstation is the gun oscillator that, op that operates with a microwave signal of frequency 10.5 GHz. The signal power range is 10 to 20 mW. This amount of power might cause a dangerous effect on human body, especially on eyes. So I would like to recommend you not to look through the gun oscillator while it is powered up and you should terminate the waveguide opening before powering up the setup. The waveguide used here can operate between 8.2 and 12.4 GHz. The figure of a gun oscillator can be seen on the screen now. It is connected with the power supply unit. The other side of the gun oscillator is connected with waveguide. The schematic symbol of the gun oscillator is shown at the right. The power supply unit shown on the screen is specially designed for powering up the gun oscillator. The output of power supply is connected to the oscillator. The power supply unit has an on-off switch, analog display to show the DC excitation voltage, some control knobs. Function of each knob will be explained later. Attenuator is a device that can reduce the power level at output. A plastic fiberglass with resistive coating is used to absorb the microwave power which is called blade. The blade is placed inside the waveguide and in parallel to the waveguide sidewalls. If the blade is placed in a fixed position, the power absorption will be constant and it is called a fixed attenuator. But for attenuator whose blade position can be controlled is called a variable attenuator. You can see a variable attenuator with blade control arm in the figure. The symbol of a variable attenuator is shown here. If 
the control arm is moved all the way in the blade will be positioned at the middle of the web guide hole the attenuation will be maximum and literally no signal can pass through a thermistor is a resistive device whose resistance is controlled by microwave energy when microwave power is absorbed by the thermistor its resistance gets sensed which is sensed by the power meter and indicated on the meter's monitor the figure of the thermistor mounted on a wave guide is shown here power reception of the thermistor can be controlled by two matching screws as shown in the figure a thermistor mount is also has a movable short circuit the thermistor is an integral part of the power meter which is shown in the figure the power meter is used to measure microwave power the meter is basically a wheatstone disc where three arms of the breeze are inside the unit and the fourth arm is the thermistor as it is a breeze network you should always nullify the device before use it means that the meter should be zeroed by controlling the zero adjust knob The microwave components are connected together to prepare an experimental setup. Two plastic connectors are used to connect two components at one side. See the illustration on the page to see how to connect components together. Finally, an assembled setup is placed on a pair of supports. figure of the support is displayed here a work station for microwave signal measurement at used at ryerson university's microwave engineering lab is shown in the photograph this photograph shows three units placed vertically on above another is used in addition to the components shown before the unit at the bottom is the power supply for the can oscillator the middle unit is the power meter and the top unit is called the static wave ratio or swr meter this is the photograph of the can oscillator the cord of the device is connected with the output port of the power meter power supply unit the power supply unit is shown on the video the unit contains an on off switch a dial to indicate the dc voltage supplied to the gyro oscillator and some push down switches and a voltage regulation knob We use this knob to apply 8.5 volt DC excitation to the gun oscillator. The photos displayed on the screen are the attenuators, the fixed attenuators and the variable attenuators. Have a close look into the attenuator cavity. you will find the resistive coating fiberglass blade the blade is responsible to absorb the microwave power and thus attenuate the signal level we have two fixed attenuators in the lab on 6 dB and another on 30 dB attenuator see the blade control arm of the variable attenuator on the this image the bullet position can read out from the millimeter scale imprinted on the arm actual look of the thermistor mount is shown in this photo the matching screws and the movable short circuits are leveled on the figure the short circuit can be moved inward and outward to hold the short circuit in a position a knob lock is used 
This is the photo of the power meter. Thermistor is connected to the input port of the meter. Power readings can be obtained from this dial. We can read power in both milliwatt and in dBm. The range selection button are used to the proper range. Highest range is 10 milliwatt. The zero adjust knobs are used to zeroing the meter. A slotted line waveguide is an important component to measure the microwave frequency. As you know, the frequency of the gun oscillator is about 10.5 GHz. Such high frequency signal cannot be measured by oscilloscope. So we, use, we have to use slotted line waveguide with the, uh, that is mounted with a diode detector to measure the wavelength and the frequency using the SWR meter. There is a millimeter scale marked on the slotted line. A SWR meter is shown in the figure that measures a relative power coming to its input from the diode detector or the crystal detector. There is a gain knob to amplify the received signal. The SWR can measure a signal up to negative 70 dB. The electromagnetic wave can be reflected back in waveguide and the reflection factor can be measured with a directional coupler. The four port component shown on your screen is a directional coupler. The port are called the input port, the output port, sampling port and the isolated port. A crystal detector is used to measure the reflected power. A waveguide must be terminated with a short circuit or a mesh load. Except the crystal detector and the thermistor mount who have closed end. The other component must be terminated with a terminator as suggested by the experimental setup. See a diode detector here and the support on which the setup should be placed and also some plastic connector that is used to connect the assemble the device and a BNC connector or T connector that is used to connect the oscilloscope cable with this. In this exercise, you will learn to recognize the different microwave components and how to use certain place of equipment and such as the gun oscillator, power supply, the gun oscillator and the power meter. You will use the gun oscillator power supply to power the gun oscillator. The microwave signal generator by the gun oscillator will be attenuated by the variable attenuator. The power of this signal will be monitored using the thermistor mount and the power meter at different setting of the variable attenuator and of the thermistor mount short circuit. This first exercise Let us start the experiment. Make sure that all the devices are at zero. We need a power meter and here the experimental setup, you see the gun oscillator is connected with the gun oscillator power supply and with the gun oscillator we connect variable attenuator and with variable attenuator it connects thermistor mount and the thermistor mount is connected with the power meter.
so this is the setup and the entire setup is placed onto support so this is the setup we required for let the let us take a uh, gun oscillator and then we connect variable attenuator we put a plastic connector to connect the variable attenuator with gun oscillator we put another one from the other side another connector from the other side now we have to uh, connect the thermistor mount make sure you connect it in the properly so there are holes should be the cavity should be messed so now i put a plastic connector insert the nail in the hole and bend it then we assemble the uh, setup so the setup is done we need to place this setup on the support so i put this on the support now so make sure that your variable attenuator plate is at all the way in now we have to set a dc voltage of 8.5 volt i connect uh, the gun oscillator with gun oscillator power supply and turn the power supply one then we have to put the variable attenuator element that i already did and if you put variable attenuator at 11 millimeter no signal can pass through the oscillator uh, to the thermistor so all the signals will be blocked by the variable attenuator as we need a zero power at the power meter so at first we block enter signal by putting the variable attenuator at 11 millimeter position then we apply 8.5 volt on the gun oscillator uh, power supply in 10 milliwatt range finally we need to can, uh, turn on the power meter and uh, we have to adjust the power meter to zero uh, using zero adjust knobs we have two knobs uh, we can play with to make the power meter reading to zero and how we can do that so we connect the cord to the power meter and once you connect the cord you see the needle is not zero now you can see a power up, uh, power showing up on the power meter now we need to make it zero so i disconnect the gun oscillator power supply and then playing with the zero adjust knobs to make it zero now you reconnect the power oscillator and you see the power meter is now showing zero so our zero adjusting is done we need to make 1.6 millimeter on the variable attenuator so it was initially at 11 millimeter i pull it all the way out to 0 millimeter then i move one round so it is now at 0 millimeter now so I move on round that is 0.5 then I move another round it is on on round 1.5 and then 10 from the circular one so I got 1.6 now so if now we are we have to see what is going to happen if we play with the movable short circuit so movable short circuit is now uh, all the way in so i loosen the null lock so you see the lock i'm uh, loosen, loosening it and then slowly pull it out and look at the uh, power meter screen the needle is going down then going up again down 
and again up so I am showing you again the stiffer pull it inward then it is going down and then going up then going down and then going up again so you see it goes up and down like the signal oscillates that means the gun oscillator produce a oscillating signal or uh, sine wave or alternate time varying signal so the signal is s Now we have to adjust the position of the short circuit to obtain a maximum power. Just I am moving the short circuit position and see the power reading is increasing. So when we get the maximum power, we, we are power is decreasing. Then I pulling it out. Yeah, this power is now at the maximum. So this is the maximum power. I lock this position and read out this value it is at 10 millimeter scale so the value is 0 0.35 so i multiply 0 0.35 with 10 so the value will be 3.5 milliwatt so at this stage uh, the thermistor mount is receiving 3.5 milliwatt power so which will be recorded in this at step 10 we will calibrate the power meter our power meter has multiple ranges so now i want to check the range ranges are working or not so to check it let us measure 2 milliwatt uh, with 10 milliwatt range and 3 milliwatt range so i will measure 10 milliwatt uh, 2 milliwatt power in 10 milliwatt range and if the needle is uh, showing up 0.2 position that will be 2 milliwatt in 10 milliwatt range and if i choose 3 milliwatt range and want to get the same power then the needle will now go go, go will go to the reach to the 2 milliwatt position and if we get uh, the same value uh, and we will get the same value regardless the range we switch. So if now we slowly move the blade of the variable attenuator to the center of the waveguide like 11.43 millimeter on the Barnier scale and if we move on point 11.43 millimeter that means there will be no signal passing through the variable attenuator so the power meter reading will be zero now if i change one millimeter range in the power meter and zero eight and then we pull the uh, variable attenuator uh, sorry pull the thermistor mount movable short circuit all the way out or in there will be no effect because there is no power reaching to the thermistor mount so because the bullet is at the center of the waveguide and it blocking all the signals and no signal can reach to the power meter
here you can see some review questions the review questions uh, ask that what type signals are considered to be microwave signal what is a waveguide and what was the attenuation in the type of variable attenuator that you have used in the exercise what are two major functions of the variable attenuator so these are the review questions at the end of this lab you are supposed to know the answer and there is another one what is a thermistor uh, thermistor so i would like to uh, tell you one thing that uh, this lab you don't need to prepare any report but you have to write down a assessment test a quiz short quiz uh, beyond uh, based on the theory that you have learned here so for example we might ask you a multiple choice question like this what is the frequency range of your gun oscillator so there should be multiple answer like 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 10 gigahertz, 10 uh, megahertz like this. So the correct answer is 10 gigahertz. 